growth is unstoppable. And from the trajectory of growing economy the WUCA world will encounter uncertain number of advancements on its way which would have probably inconceivable generations before. Everyone will pave its own way toward growth for sure. But will everyone be able to survive in its field of business when growth hits the market? That is the question. Human ingenuity in today's competitive era lies on being preemptive in foreseeing the trends in the business of products or services. The advancement in technology succeeds the features and benefits of the existing one, in turn results in consumers navigating from the older to newer. In view of harmonizing the benefits of growing trajectory and the speed in changing lifestyles. Had it not been the case, the 21 inches TV would never have fit in our palms. The streaming messages on 2G spectrum would not have lost its attraction to the streaming MMCs on 3G spectrum, and then to the streaming videos over YouTube and WhatsApp, and what's not on 4G spectrum. Teleconference and video conference would not have bridged the gap between cities and countries. When it comes to presenting to the clients or interviewing potential talent, cities like Bangalore and Pune which once resembled as playground, flooded throughout for citizens, would not have become the motherlands for high-tech startups and BPOs, and accompanying your beloved to dine out would not have limited to once in three months, on the face of when the same specialty food can be served in your privacy at home within pre-specified deadline by delivery startups like Swiggy and Zomato etc. Examples will not end if you look around. But history witnesses, every boon arrives with the bane unfolded. If it's not true, what makes startups giving up hopes soon to the hands of flooding competition in the marketplace? What makes businesses of the layoff trick to cross break even in their quest to become cash cows? What makes unemployment rate to grow nearly at par GDP while the government keeps releasing new schemes for employment? And what makes neophytes to find it easier to end their lives to the hands of pessimism? We talk about artificial intelligence and follow the technology path to climb the ladder of growth at the expense of what we have left far behind, the humanity. If it's false, what had stopped the business leaders to construct a genuine resource planning at the beginning? so that they might not shed their hands of many employees in the name of poor performance issues, which eventually occurs owing to change in technology, or rise in demand of cutting expenditures. To understand, to build logic, to plan and to surrender to emotions, all these come from the internal vital force, which in one word, is called the human intelligence, and usually described as the ability to perceive information and to retain the same as knowledge, to be applied towards adaptive behaviors within an environment or context. And your customers apply the same at times when you employ a recently adopted artificial intelligence. Be they are your fastidious clients or potential consumers, doesn't it look like businesses drop their credibility before them when they unnecessarily write on technology to intrude in their privacy for promoting the products or services? If it's not true, what makes you drop the phone receiver? or cut the call when the customer care executive calls you for retail banking. Be you are a designer, software developer, running ad agency, offering services for SaaS, or computer hardware maintenance, running virtual marketplace, or e-commerce, or offering corporate gifting and refreshment services, whatsoever, you depend on market your offerings and lead generation. You try your luck from emailing to posting on Facebook to campaign on YouTube, TikTok and everything. But never you think. First, how many leads you received on your social media posts? And what percentage of those eventually increased your final throughput? And second, what extent you could identify the bottlenecks and non-bottlenecks that affected your current throughput? Anything between mere 3 to 10% will not guarantee you survive in the growing economy because you are not the one who make efforts to reach the consumer classes. Besides, the world owes absolutely nothing to you. There are different parameters where your message is judged upon. Critical ones are your brand image, that is, what are you being seen as, your authenticity, that is, where are you being expected, your positioning, that is, what are you being found and talked about the most, and the credibility, that is, how are you being conceived in others' thoughts? 
it is always better to be on the right track sooner than later, when things are not controlled the way you want, and they slip out before you awake. You discover what your own decision-making habit model suggests, or create the one if not designed earlier. Believe me, such practices will build your reasoning seeing through the actions that you mostly take out in the blue. Of course, first you casually decide upon difficulty level of any action then measure impact of the same. So, here you put both in designing the model, difficulty level on the vertical side, and impact on the horizontal side, since this usually goes with the nature of every human being. You will, by yourself discover that you are easily sold out on actions which are the easiest in handling, what if their impact is very minimal. And you debate long hours on actions that are the hardest in execution, but have bigger impact over a period. Many rule out these actions which have bigger impact in the long run, since businesses are now in the habit of seeing the unforeseen future either in 3 years window, or 5 years window, but businesses which never ignore the potential of these actions, sail their boats easily in, whatsoever ups and downs the market brings for them. Such an action which, at one side, establishes your credibility, and the other side innovates options providing you the edge that your business deserves. Besides, it's not the easiest to execute but certainly will have the biggest ever impact on businesses in the long run. And the action is, forming a communion of businesses and doing business, within the communion while spreading a style of relationship, and increasing emphasis on advocacy, which fosters a culture of giving recommendation of someone, or advocating someone's work within the network, and promises every stakeholder something that has a value, a chance to discover how important he is in the business of others. Well, a general consumer of any product or service has a habit, whatever features you add to your product or service, she drives values in terms of benefits she gets out of those features, and that's how she either accepts, or neglects the offer. Same way, the business communion has potential to offer many benefits. Oligopoly in marketplace, in one side, benefits consumers leveraging price reduction on products or services at no compromise on quality, but on the other side, it downs the trustworthiness of organizations as well. You look around and you will find many examples, where a manufacturer leeches many loopholes of the other manufacturer's product or service through advertising, or any other paid form of communication. Marketers understand that oligopoly doesn't motivate war on price, therefore, they find it the easiest, pelting stones on competition but barely understand, that they grease their own hands themselves, because they are losing their credibility before customers. Take any field and you will see the trend is followed blindly, be it in the business, or in the politics. On the contrary, a business communion helps you to be seen as trustworthy because you aren't standing alone preaching your positives to your customers, but others, who all are the part of the business communion, also stand by you, referring your benefits and increasing your credibility, in turn building your chances to ride on orders. Not every customer like taking risks in business, or in life. Businesses, within communion, grow on trust and recommendations. Customers' skepticism to allow risk in doing business with others outside the recognized communion, protects interests of businesses, within communion, even in the case of unsustainable reduction in price thrown by competition, and that's how the communion builds sustainability from competitive disadvantages. The communion in business signifies a group of business owners, or service providers, or manufacturers of products, or freelancers offering different services, who perhaps may not be the best engineers or technicians or lawyers, and eminent advertisers or big sponsors, but definitely they are the champions of unity. Be you are a genius in organizing and prioritizing your tasks, but end of the day you may have to compromise on own brand building when growth hits the market. Reasons like delegation and supervision, interfacing fastidious clients, serious negotiations, human resource and administration and what's not, keep occupying your plate full day in day out. What you do then to build recommendations for your business. A business communion puts you off this burden and promises you, 
a similar value that you promised to others in the communion, as you find importance of others in your business, similarly, others also find you important in their businesses. Business turned cash cows over a period of time, but to cross break even and touch the maximum profits, makes businesses use the easiest trick, downsize employee strengths to cut expenditures, which in turn affects employment ratio. Progressive thinking and leadership style lies in not downsizing employee assets, but making full use of employees potential to turn around the profitability. Every business exists in the market to make money and so does each department to support the business for making money. Departments use inventories, induce operational expenses, and turn inventories to throughput to be passed through other departments handling different processes, and finally sold out to end consumers. There may also exist bottlenecks, between one process to another, causing unnecessary time or efforts or money and in turn increase cost burden. Cost control is not followed as a measure but to be implemented as a process, which is defined as, put your efforts systematically into actions to bring about an improvement. Therefore, downsizing employees cannot be the only measure, but finding and removing bottlenecks out of the processes ought to be the way out to bring down the operational expenditures. This can only happen when a sustainable number of orders pass through each process or department throughout a financial year. To be able to work on statistics or cost load if a new order is introduced in between. A business communion which promises every stakeholder a value, and creates businesses for everyone, can also ensure a sustainable running of every business, within communion, and no ground of downsizing employee assets. Henry Ford rightly delivered, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, but working together is success. The future of this thought, business communion is yet unforeseen but predictable, because time will come when businesses will grow within a network, formed by visionary business owners, who prefer advocating products or services of others as well within the group.